Hallelujah. Greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, it's so wonderful to see so many beautiful faces, people who love the Lord, just worshiping God together. That's my joy. Even some from back where we are right now, some from this church, but with worshiping with us in Dubai. And everyone, thank you. Thank you for upholding us in prayer. And thank you for all that you're doing for the kingdom. Amen. You ready to receive God's word today? Yes. Are you ready to receive God's word today? Yes. All right, wonderful. Turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Luke and chapter 18 and verse 9 through 14. A very precious portion of scripture. The Gospel of Luke chapter 18 verse 9 through 14. And the Bible says, And he told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves. Let's stop there. And he told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves. That they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and one a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying this to himself. God, I thank you that I am not like them. Swindlers, those unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector, Lord. I thank you I am not like him or her. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all I get. He's checking all the boxes. My father is a pastor. <laughs> My grandfather was the founder of that. But the tax collector standing some distance away was unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven. But was beating his breast. Saying, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified. Rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. This is one parable that I've read in the Bible that I struggle with. There are many beautiful parables in the Bible. But this is one I struggle with. The reason I struggle with this is every time I read this, I recognize there are only one of two sides. There aren't many options. There's, there's either this or is that. Is the Pharisee or the tax collector. And in this storyline, there's no question as to which side we are on. Because surely we are not a tax collector. When we look at others around us, we, we know in our heart, that's not me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we look at the Pharisee and we say, that's also not me. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why you're loafing around asking the question, who am I? <laughs> this is also not me, that's also not me. Lord, who am I? What am I doing with my life? Every time I read this story, I struggle because I recognize there is only one place that I usually fit in. And that's not the name by which I want to be known. Because I'm too self-righteous for that name. No, no. I'm too righteous to be a tax collector. I'm too self-righteous to be a Pharisee. You see, you get caught up between this and that. And in the journey, when I read this, I always come to this place and I say, Lord, there's only one safe place to be is to fall at your feet and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need mercy. You know, whenever we preach one message... There are people who hear it and always like to say the other side. Yeah, but you're a sinner saved by grace. You should always stand in the grace of God. You should understand Jesus finished. The... That's not the purpose of that portion. 
I understand you know the remaining theology. But Jesus wants to speak to us from this one portion with a specific intention. Because the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector was a parable. It's a story that Jesus made up. It's one of the most fundamental theological, uh, fundamental theological truths. When we look at the word of God. That if any man comes to God, that he must come humbling himself before the Lord. Because God opposes the proud and God gives grace only to one group of people. I'll say that again. God gives grace to only one group of people. He gives grace to the humble. If he gives grace only to one group of people, then I want to be there. Because I need a lot of God's grace. And I don't think I have it in me to live my Christian life without God enabling. I don't know how many of you have it in you, but as the years have gone by, I feel less. Because I know that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It is the most theological because it deals with the issue or the question of the most important uh, important thing of the life of a Christian as to how a child of God is accepted before God. Am I accepted because I'm smart? Or I know the word of God? Or I've been in church long? Or am I accepted because I humble down before God and I see that I need a savior? Hallelujah. The interesting thing about this parable is that one is a Pharisee and one is a tax collector. And these are, if you may, two ends of the spectrum. And I'll touch on that just for you to understand why these are two ends of the spectrum. These are two ends of the spectrum because they were very different. They had a lot of things in common. One of the things in common that these two had, ironically, was that a righteous Pharisee and a wicked tax collector, both were going to church. <laughs> that was probably the only common place they gathered. <laughs> that tells me something about our churches, about our lives, starting with me. Because this Pharisee, to me, represents me. Of course, I know a million other people it can represent. But the moment it doesn't start by representing me, I'm missing the plot. Because this Pharisee was a leader in the Christian community. Who were the Pharisees? You see, on face value, both of them, the Pharisee and the tax collector, both were praying to the same God. Both came, both came to the same place of worship. Both were part of the same Jewish community. Because the tax collector was not Roman, he was Jewish. And that's why the Jews hated their, what they would call, fallen brothers. Brothers who are two-timers. Brothers who worked for the enemy. Brothers who made money out of a, a difficult life that people lived. Jesus loved to contrast differing kinds of people in the kingdom so as to teach something from the word of God. When he set out these two men, he did so by appealing to their differences. Their ethical difference, their spiritual difference, their, you know, their religious difference. Or their religious or their social difference. That one in society, the Pharisee, was representing religion. He was representing uh, the one who taught the word of God, like me. I don't need to look too far to see a Pharisee. We just need to look within. One represented the theology that we hold on to. That the Pharisees were people who came from everyday life. They were not priests. But they came from everyday life. But they were people that were committed to upholding the truth of God's word. And they said, we believe we must not allow the word of God to be diluted. We believe the word must be preached as it is. The Pharisee was a respected religious member of the Jewish community. And everywhere he went, there was one thing that the Pharisee got. He got honor. He was respected. All people looked up to the Pharisee. They would ask them for interpretation of the law. 
you know it was the pharisee that was gone to and then to contrast there was the tax collector the tax collector was the opposite in the spectrum he was the wicked guy he was the sinner he was the guy making money out of people's blood he was the guy associating with the romans he was the guy living a life of sin and disobedience the tax collector was despised and in among their midst he was actually a very questionable character you can just imagine and it is to these people's house that jesus ended up going now make no mistake some people preach that jesus went to tax collector's house i want you to know jesus went to simon the pharisee's house and he also went to the tax collector's house amen you know why because both needed jesus hallelujah let's not make one theology over the other jesus knew everybody needed a savior hallelujah the problem is everybody does not know that they need a savior <laughs> now that's the problem jesus knows that so throughout the gospels whenever you look at this name tax collector uh, zacchaeus was a tax collector oh he was a wicked man and we know zacchaeus stole up to i mean he stole a lot of people's money in fact he had so much money he was saying if i stole from anybody he had so much money he said if i stole from anybody i'll give four times back so you can just imagine without stealing how much money he made he had tons of money on his hand so they were looked at as sinners a term that was reserved for the heathen for the prostitutes and the wicked among the jewish people two ends of the spectrum jesus loved the story line of two ends of the spectrum when he comes to the woman by the well of samaria in john's gospel in chapter 4 he picks up two ends of the spectrum here is jesus the holy of holy at one end and this woman who is a wicked prostitute at the other end she had everything going against her in the jewish community she was a woman she didn't have a voice she was a sinner that kept her out of the you know the ways of god she had married five times she was a divorcee that was a reason enough for her to be thrown out now she was living in she was living in with somebody that was messed up then she was from the area of samaria they were looked at as half uh, you know unfaithful people that were not faithful to the jewish community everything about her was wrong jesus loved to contrast because the best of our righteousness is like filthy rags before god i think there are only two groups of people one group of people who know they need a savior and another who don't one group of people who know that they are the righteousness of god and another who try to work their righteousness by themselves the pharisees were a religious group in judaism very prominent very powerful in the time of, of jesus you know in the, that time in fact the name pharisee comes from an aramaic name which means to separate to be a to be a sect by themselves they were sectarian they were like we are better than you group <laughs> actually even sinners do that we are better than you we don't want to come to church we are better than you uh, you see the fact is everybody is sectarian in their heart why because everybody is looking for a place where they will belong if anybody rejects you you will look for a group that will accept you the heart of man is looking for a sect because he wants to belong he wants to be part he wants to have an identity and unlike the sadducees the pharisees believe that there is a resurrection the pharisees they they begin to stand up in fact there was a time in the jewish history after the maccabees revolt a group of people dedicated themselves to restoring the jewish people's love and commitment to the law of god or the word of god although the pharisees started with a commitment to the word of god after a few years they sidetracked and by the time of the new testament by jesus's time the pharisees formed they ended up becoming opposers to the gospel of jesus those that started with a good intention because they had not checked their heart ended up becoming enemies of the cross and that's the thing about a pharisee in our heart many of us begin our christian journey with a good intention but because we are not constantly searching our heart we do not know the day we end up becoming enemies of the cross pharisees had an identity what was the identity we are the ones who are the guys who are holding on to the traditions we are the ones from our father's time we have been faithful and that sinner or oh, that fellow that guy is a terrible fellow there is an identity we often get by belonging to a particular sect 
people like to belong to a particular group because they feel that's the identity i want people to know be my that's something that i want people to know and so these pharisees belong in a worthy in a good way but ended up becoming the enemies of the gospel of jesus throughout their history the pharisees actually begin to grow their work their teaching they became rabbis many of them taught the word of god you know, about everyday situations people went to them to know what the word of god had to say they in fact loved the mosaic law and they also loved the oral traditions that were handed down the word of god and the traditions together it's in this setting that we see jesus encountering these pharisees Whenever you look in the Bible, Jesus and the Pharisees, they always had challenges. And yet Jesus was visiting Pharisees. And yet we see that the Pharisees were rushing to John the Baptist to repent and to be baptized. So Pharisees were not bad people. There were just some among them who knew they needed a savior and others among them who just refused to see the need for a savior because of their self-righteousness. Many times when we come to the Lord, when we come, that, that, that whole group, I look at the Pharisees and I think to myself, this has to do with people like me, who's a pastor, who's a leader, or maybe the bishops or the leaders of organizations or ministries. And many times we will look at those kind of people and we'll say, ah, they're the Pharisees. But the truth is, I find Pharisees everywhere. I find a Pharisee firstly in me. a person who needs a savior secondly when you look into marriages between husbands and wives you find out you know they're both of them are always looking down on the other one thank you lord i'm not like her i thank you lord i'm not like him i'm better i'm smarter and i'm always right be pharisee and that is the heart of a pharisee a pharisee feels pharisee wants to feel safe by being right by being heard by being better by being smarter and by all of that and it is to this group of people jesus looked at in matthew's gospel 23 and he rained down some of the harshest words he spoke to anybody in fact pharisees are not only among married couples or among spouses who think they are one better than the other pharisees are among anybody that is in strife with one another and cannot humble down and walk in peace with one another because we carry a heart that i know better i'm smarter i have read better my fathers my, you know our generations are better somewhere in the journey jesus comes and matthew's gospel he is scathing in his words to the pharisees and he says woe unto you the pharisees and the people we will look at you guys might look at some of us leaders and pastors and you'll say wow unto you jesus looked at us and said woe unto you <laughs> the ones we wow are the ones that jesus woes and individually when we wow ourselves jesus woes us woe unto you for counting yourself self righteous woe unto you for thinking you're better than others woe unto you that you think you know the scriptures you think you know god is woeing the leaders and woeing the pastors and and woeing the the spouses that are fighting with each other and woeing people that are in strife with one another and finally he's woeing each one of us who think we are better than others we know better woe unto you and he literally goes out there and he and he gives them a whole list of woes and he says woe unto you you who tie up heavy loads and lay on men's shoulder but themselves are unwilling to move their little finger to they do all the deeds to be noticed by men you see there are a lot of problem noticed by men love the place of honor they love to be called rabbi so many things in matthew 23 and and the gospel of luke he speaks about the pharisees there are some things that i that i noted down that i thought were interesting some signs of the pharisees which is me and which is you I'm not talking about others I'm talking about us some signs you don't have to look very far you just have to look within what are the things about the pharisees firstly they see that they loved to be noticed by someone of prominence what drama we will do you know when someone of prominence notices us wow i <laughs> we all love to be around people with prominence can we take a picture 
Oh, can I get a picture with you? And every one of us. And so we'll have that picture so we can show everybody I was with this person and you know I was with that person. You know who I'm connected to? You know who I have on my speed dial? The challenge is if we have a lot of prominent people on our speed dial. But when we pray, God of heaven looks on the inside and he says, I will not listen to their prayer because they are proud and self-righteous. We may be able to reach our friends or prominent people quickly. But if you're not able to reach God, Jesus says, I am near to those that have a humble and contrite heart, a broken spirit. Them I will not despise, says the Lord. It is the humble that are close to God. Hallelujah. That's the heart of God. So it does not matter if you know me or you know someone else or who I know. It really doesn't matter to God. What matters to God is what is the posture of our heart. He who, the Pharisees love to be noticed. (laughs) Did you notice me? We all dress well. (laughs) We dress well and we look nice and put on all the tuxedos and all. Why? Did you notice me? Did Did you see how good looking I was? I'm talking about me. You can figure out about yourself. If you don't like to face things about yourself, God will have one day make all of us face it. I tell you, sooner better face it here on earth because when we get to heaven, there's no review petition there. Amen. There's no second opportunity. Now is the time for repentance. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Now is the day where we repent and turn to God. God, search my heart, O God. Know my wicked thoughts. A Pharisee is always looking at his heart. I thank you, Lord, that my heart is not like his. Swindler. Adulteress. Wicked. But we, Pharisees, of the tribe of Benjamin. Pharisee of Pharisees. Hebrew of Hebrews. Oh, concerning the law, blameless. Beep. You just failed. God says you have no place in the kingdom. Now let me show you that scripture because if you miss that scripture, you look what it says in Luke's Gospel 18 and verse, and, 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 and it says uh, in verse uh, 14, I tell you this man went to his house justified. He's talking about the tax collector. Jesus is saying the tax collector went back home justified. Why? Because... He came humble before God. And the Pharisee, what does it say about the Pharisee? We'll start with the Pharisee, we'll go to the tax collector. He came home justified rather than the other for everyone. Okay, I'm telling you the climax of judgment day. Is that ready? Are you ready for this? If you want to know what judgment day for you is going to be like, here it is. Okay, shall we read it together? For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself Now apply this to your marriage. Now apply this to the way we look at others. Apply this to our own hearts. He who humbles himself, God says, I will personally see to it that I exalt you. But if you fight your battles for yourself, the scripture starts with This parable he shared about people who trusted in themselves and they were right that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Every time we have a problem with somebody, we view them with contempt. Oh, they they don't know anything, they're foolish, they're useless. The Pharisees loved to be to be known for something they were not, which means they loved to behave. In a particular way in front of others so others would notice. Praise the Lord, brother. Hey, Sunday morning, praise the Lord, brother. How, what about Monday through Saturday? Where's the praise gone? We love to be known. We, we are like an image of ourselves. We like this image. Please, everybody, when you see me, this is the image I want you to have about me. Praise the Lord. But where's the praise gone when hard times come? Where's the praise gone when you failed an exam? Where's the praise gone when somebody didn't notice you? Where's the praise gone when someone lied about you? That's the time God wants us to praise Him. Hallelujah. 
when nothing is working right. The Pharisees love to be known for something that they were not. The Pharisees love to be seen in a particular light. Everybody, please look at me, holy. <laughs> now, the Pharisees love to make the long prayers. Oh, in Jesus' name, Father God. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, I'd, I'd hear the, many of the people that be praying, uh, uh, Our Father in heaven, you only created the heavens and the earth. You are the Alpha and the Omega. See, he specifically remembers he only created. He doesn't have a second option. There's no, there's no competition to that. But what are we doing? We're reminding him because we're, we're making specific kinds of prayers. Religious prayers. On the outside we're praying, but on the inside, there is something that's on the inside that does not fit the image of the outside. On the inside, there's a secret life. On the inside, there is a passcode on your phone that you do not want anybody to open. There is a computer that you want to shut down so tightly that nobody should see what's happening. There is a part of you that's a Pharisee. There's a part of me that's a Pharisee. Where our lives are so secret, our lives are so hidden that these two images don't get along. And so, they love to be seen in a particular light. They love to be honored. They love the front seats in the banquets, Jesus said. They love the honor. They love the front seats in the banquet. You'll say, yeah, yeah, I know of pastors who love the front seat. How about, do you know you? You know, some will say, I know pastors who love the front seat. But there are others who simply say, nobody honored me. It's the same thing. It's just that one got the seat and the other didn't. The heart condition was the same. Are you with me? So the, these Pharisees, what did they do? They love to be honored. Then they love to be teachers. They hated being called out. They, you know, one of, we, one of the things about us, when we're Pharisees, we hate being called out, we're wrong. And then we'll say, what about you? You also do the same thing. As if only I do it. You see, what is that? That is a Pharisee's heart. The water boundary. What about you? You also do. Then I can. See, so it's like saying, you sin, therefore I can also sin. See, this just exposes that we and the tax collectors are the same. We're just the same. It's just that we dress differently. We wear the robes of righteousness. <laughs> by faith we are saved. <laughs> but by actions we, we are damned. By the way we live. The Pharisees hated being called out. They were willing to character assassinate. To look in good light. We could speak about others in a bad way. So that we can look in good light. They were willing to hate and kill a brother. Like they hated Jesus. And they killed him. Because he spoke things they didn't like. The thing about Pharisees is that. We as Pharisees. We can love our traditions. Rather than loving truth. We can love the way we do things. Traditions are not bad. There are good traditions and there are bad traditions. Good traditions. Having family prayer at home is a good tradition. Every day. You know, wearing modest dress is a good tradition of our cultures. You can have bad traditions. Traditions that, that, that just promote ourselves and traditions of self-righteousness. So, when, the, when I, saw, I saw the word Pharisee and I saw three P's that seemed to have, you know... That, that, that stood out and demonstrated who a Pharisee really is. And I saw three P's. And the first P that the Pharisee loved was a Pharisee loved power. Now you might say, ah, I know a few pastors like that. Sure, I know a few pastors like that, including me. I'm talking about us. But when you step out of that place and you look at every one of us loves power. How do I know that? When we try to win a battle, when we try to fight and get control in an argument, when we are upset in our marriage and we are not happy and not able to humble down, that is a fight for power. We're all the same. We just do it on different platforms. Come on, are you listening to me? We're all the same. We just do it on different platforms. And depending on which platform is being discussed, if it is a platform where you are not on, you will say, Ah, that's right. I know that one. All these pastors, they're all terrible. But if you're discussing marriage and you are one of the players on that platform, but you don't know what I've gone through. We go into self-righteousness. We love power. The power to be in control. The second thing I saw about Pharisees is that Pharisees love prominence. My word should be heard and respected. My word should be right. I have to be right. I am right. Why? Because I know. I've been among them. I've seen things. <laughs> That's like our kids saying, you know, uh, you know in my, 
I've seen among my parents, been among my parents, I've seen things. <laughs> Wait, honey, till we get you married. Now we'll be among you seeing things. <laughs> Every one of us is the same. Our hearts are just so, so self-righteous. We love, they love power. No, no, not they. We. We love power as Pharisees. We love prominence as family, Pharisees. And one of the things Pharisees loved is they loved pretense. Pretense. How many of you, when a guest comes home, all right, look at me for a minute. When a guest comes home, there's a whirlwind cleaning of the front half room. <laughs> you didn't feel like cleaning it before someone came home. So what did we do? Pretense. Pretends that this is how our house actually is all the time. Oh, come on now. Don't go quiet on me. How many Pharisees do I have in the house? Come on, there we go. Pretends. We don't want others to see the real. And this is what we do. When a guest comes home, we clean up the front room. When we come home to church on Sunday morning, we clean up our act. Just like on the car till you reached, you had a fight. <laughs> and then you got in and said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. Come on, how many Pharisees do we have here? The, you see, our problem is we, we actually tell ourselves, I'm better. I'm better than what I think I am. That's a good confession. You know, I, I've been to many parts of the world, especially among the African churches I've seen. I love, I love their songs because there's a lot of proclamation. Uh, I went to one church many years ago, uh, maybe five, six years ago, and they were singing a song called, I am Superman. They were like, I'm Superman, I'm Superman. Now, now, you don't see many other communities in the West sing that, I'm Superman. Why? Because they already know they're Superman. Why are we confessing? We are trying to become something that we don't think we are. Now, depending on where we come from, the cultural backgrounds, what atrocities we've been through, we begin to confess things that we, do, we are not yet there. But the point I'm trying to say is sometimes we can, we can live a life a lie, And we love to pretend in front of others. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Pastor has been praising the Lord. Now it's about time we all started praising the Lord every single day. Amen. You see, why did the Pharisees hate Jesus? The Pharisees hated Jesus, I think, for three specific reasons. The first reason they hated Jesus, because I think the Pharisees were jealous. When they saw the number of people following him, <laughs> and they counted the number of people in their church, <laughs> their church they counted 20, 15, 5, and they just go, oh, 5,000, oh, this is not looking good. So one of the first reasons they did not like Jesus is because he was more popular than them. And that's exactly what they wanted. One of the reasons we don't like others who say they are right is because when we see they're more popular than us, more smarter, more well-dressed, driving in a better car, living in a bigger home, and they got everything that we dream we want, we sit back and say, I thank God I'm not like them. I'm sure he's stealing from his office. I'm sure he's not paying his taxes. What are we trying to do? We're feeling bad about ourselves and to feel better, we just become a Pharisee. How could we have prayed different? I thank you Lord that you have blessed them. I'm grateful today for food on my table. You have been good to them and you have been good to me. Hallelujah. The heart, the posture of the heart. They were jealous about Jesus because they disliked, they didn't like his success. They believed that they were the teachers and they were the right ones and they were the ones who were saying, and this Jesus, what is he doing? Breaking the Sabbath, hanging around with women who are supplying from their resources. They're, they're loafing around the community. I mean, he's doing all kinds of messy things and he's challenging our Pharisees. He's calling them dead men's sepulchers. This guy's got to be messy. They hated him because of his popularity. The Pharisees hated Jesus because he exposed their hypocrisy. And I'm going to tell you there'll come a day when we will hate Jesus. You know when we hate Jesus? When God sends people into our life to expose our hypocrisy and we blame them, we hate Jesus. Because we blame them, oh they're the reason because of them 
Because of them, I'm not going to church. No, you're not going to church because you're hurt, offended, you're a Pharisee. Ouch. That hurt, didn't it? But the fact is, we don't like it. Because we have an image of ourselves. We want to build an image about ourselves that we want everyone to have. Pharisees lived like hypocrites. They lived in a hypocrisy and they did not know how to walk with God. They re- he regularly exposed their hypocrisy. And the Pharisees, they loved. The third thing I see is that the Pharisees loved traditions or methods, how they did it, but they hated truth. Truth always exposes who we really are. But on the contrary, a tax collector, who was he? See, a Pharisee was a sect. A tax collector was an office. He collected tax. He was a sinner, a publican. In fact, they were so wicked that they were always looked down on. When the Bible talks about a Pharisee and a tax collector, it was the other end of the, it was the bottom of the barrel for them. He, the tax collector was along with the harlots and the heathen and the, you know, uh, and the swindlers and the tax collectors. <laughs> to the bottom of the barrel. So when both came to the altar, how, how can we even fathom such a wicked man and, and, and such a good man standing together? When, the, when, when this was going on, the tax collectors became rich. They made a lot of money. Every day they would come to the villages and take the money. And they were sinners. They were cheats. They were traitors. They were swindlers. That the Bible compares them with the wicked. But the Pharisee, therefore, he was not so good. But the publican was bad. <laughs> this is the thing about our Pharisee little heart. I know I'm not so bad, good. But that person, horrible. In our arguments we have in our homes or our marriages or our families or I know I'm not perfect but you, you're horrible. So we escape in the guise of I know I'm not perfect but you. Pharisee. The Pharisee was not good but the publican was worse. That was the Pharisee's standard. Lord, I thank you that I'm better than him. The publican was notorious, a thief, wicked person. And we find both of them at the church. The Pharisee looked better on the outside. He wore his robes. You see the difference between the Pharisee and the tax collector? The tax collector just fell on his face. The Pharisee looked from far, I thank you Lord, I tithe, I give offerings, I fast, I pray, I come to church, I do ministry, I do Bible study, I do all of that. But that guy, he is horrible, she is horrible. The, the, the Pharisee has an outward image of looking good. But Jesus looked right in. The tax collector on the outside was horrible. Everyone knew it. But the inside he said, Lord, have mercy on me. The Pharisee on the outside looked good. But the inside said, I don't think I need your righteousness because I'm doing pretty good. I fast, I pray, I read the Bible, I preach in church, I do everything. Both of them came to the temple to pray. One's heart. One was praying on the outside with a hard heart inside. The other was praying broken on the inside with nothing to show on the outside. As diverse as they looked, the Pharisee was good and the tax collector was bad. Both of them were rejected by God because both had fallen short of the glory of God. Both were loved by God and both were rejected by God. But what was the difference? The Pharisee rejected God saying, in my righteousness, I'm good enough. But the tax collector repented before God. The difference was not in God's posture towards them. It was in their posture towards God. Jesus called out their blindness and he said, oh, you're living these wicked lives. 
the pharisee will, will said i'm a man of discipline i'm a man of prayer i regularly tithe i regularly fast i regularly come to church on sunday i'm thankful for all the things in my life i thank you god you blessed me i thank you i'm different from other people i thank you that i'm living far better in society than these wicked people i thank you that i attend church i thank you that i know the word of god better i thank you i come from a better family i thank you that my generations are blessed unlike these wicked people he knew everything that he wanted to thank god for yet it was the tax collector not the pharisee who the bible declares in luke 18 who went to heaven in luke 18 and verse 14 he said i tell you everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled verse 14 says i tell you this man went down to his house justified it was the tax collector who was justified before the lord because he looked to the lord and he cried out to God and he said, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. The Pharisee looked on his outside. The tax collector constantly looked onto his inside. He stood far away, could not even come close to the Pharisee, would not lift his eyes to heaven. He beat his breast and said, Father, God have mercy on me. I confess I am a sinner. It is those tax collectors about which Jesus said, the prostitutes and the sinners and the tax collectors are entering the kingdom faster. Not the Pharisees. And it is strange when we begin listening to this parable, every one of us knows we identify with better than the tax collector. But yet Jesus says, it's them who's entering the kingdom of heaven. It is them who are walking with God. It is them who are bringing glory to God's name. Because Matthew's Gospel 18 4 says, Whoever humbles himself as a child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But he who hum is exalted will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Humble yourself there before the mighty hand of God and in due time He will lift you up. I believe God is calling our hearts to reposition our posture of our heart. There are also tax collectors that continue to be wicked. And there are Pharisees who refuse to humble down. On the outside, very Christian. But on the inside, the truth is there are self-righteous in both camps and both need a savior. Amen. The tax collector needs a savior. It's just that he knows that he needs the mercy of God. The Pharisee needs a savior but he's too proud to humble down. He says, I've been in church, my generations, my grandfather, great-grandfather onwards, we're all in church. That's a Pharisee. Because that Pharisee is in church and rebelling. But who is a tax collector, hasn't seen church generations, lived in wickedness. He comes and says, Lord have mercy. He beat his breast, would not even look up. And I, and I really believe this is the posture of our heart God wants us to have as believers. That we would not come to God as Pharisees. Because on the outside we are all looking pretty. But the inside God sees dead man's bones inside. On the inside, our Christianity is dead. On the inside, our proclamation is dead. On the inside, Bible, Jesus says, look in it. It's all whitewashed, simple curse on the outside, but inside is dead man's bones. And I believe it's time for us to repent and humble down before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. You know, I believe from these things that I've just been sharing there are a few things that I've come to understand firstly from this portion of scripture it's not always true that those who pray are the ones who love God it's not true that those who pray the long prayers and are the ones who love God or it's not true that those who know the Bible are the ones who love God. It's not true. 
some people don't know the law don't know the bible and don't pray but they still think they love god i also found that it, that a man who prays you can pray to god pleading acceptance accept me because of who whatever i know who i am and you know you know that kind of a pharisee heart discusses others oh those people oh they think they are christian but you know we are better than them pharisees discuss others because they're too afraid to look at themselves and i believe god wants to wash our hearts and like we would come not like the pharisees and say lord i don't want to discuss them create in me a clean heart oh god turn my heart towards you i don't want to discuss my husband my wife my pastor my leader my lord i want to discuss me i want to discuss me by not telling you why i'm so acceptable i want to discuss me by telling you if you don't have mercy on me i have no hope you're all i need you're all i have lord we worship you jesus our style of worship doesn't matter to god the pharisee style of worship was he stood up lifted his hands thank you lord i'm not like him that was the style of worship the sinner fell to the ground wouldn't look up he said have mercy lord the pharisee said all i see is how good i am and how terrible he is the sinner said all i see is how terrible i am and how beautiful you are there's something about carrying a humble heart take your eyes of others instead of saying lord search his heart say search my heart it's me lord that needs change how many would how many would pray that prayer change me lord i, I want to focus on me the pharisee was looking at his reformed behavior outside outside change pharisee saying on the outside i wear these robes i'm praying I, i'm fasting i'm giving i'm doing i'm singing in the choir i'm uh, i'm shouting praise i'm i'm thumping the bible i'm telling others on the outside i'm doing everything oh by the way i'm also <laughs> i'm also watching church on zoom or <laughs> online i'm also giving to the poor i'm doing everything right you see the pharisee focuses on external behavioral change that the sinner f- focus on the mercy of god and inside clean me inside lord clean me inside lord it's me who needs this change the pharisee focuses on his spouse the sinner focuses on himself change me lord as you change me you will take care of others in everyday living i believe god wants us to have a humble heart that prays this prayer pray with me if you can search my heart oh god search me on the outside i'm looking pretty lord on the inside lord there's just so much that needs to be cleaned up lord maybe not sins like the tax collector the swindler the adulterer and maybe not all of that but there's lust and pride and arrogance and self-seeking and isolation and anger to have mercy lord have mercy lord change me lord change me lord go ahead take a few seconds you talk to god go ahead you talk to god shorama ke ke slante change me change me lord change me i don't want to f- fight for acceptance and approval before you lord i want to come mercy 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 worship you i give you glory and honor have mercy on us lord father we we just pray you give us grace to take our eyes off 
our exterior what others see and have the courage to look in clean up the dead men's bones on the inside of our heart that will be a temple holy pure and acceptable unto you we give you all the glory and honor in jesus mighty name amen amen god bless you